Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of this new studio. My name is Tim, the one and only child of Mecca. And on this episode, man, we're going to really get to the fun stuff. We're going to start to paint. Uh, we've got the corner all repaired, patched. It's looking good. It's nice and smooth. So essentially, we've got all of our nubs clipped and sanded. We've got our seams all done up. Now it's time to have some fun. So without any further ado, we're going to show you a few things that we're going to need for this process. Uh, we're going to prime. We're going to paint. It's going to look good. So let's get into it and show you what we got. All right, so here's everything that we need to get this room painted. Um, we've got our paint trays in two different sizes, one for you know just little spot paints and one for our smaller rollers. We've got our paint stirrers. We've got a nine and a four inch uh, roller with the foam heads and everything. And then the most important part are the primer and the paint. Um, now, Home Depot's closest to me, so I use the bare stuff. Um, I've got a gallon of the bare multi-surface uh, stain blocking primer and sealer. Now, I know a lot of you guys will probably say, why didn't you use kills? Why didn't you use kills? I've used kills in the past. I actually like this better. I think it grips the surface a lot better, and um, I just, I don't know. I like this, I like this multi-surface primer a lot better. Now, <clears throat> for... The walls, we're going with a bare scuff defense. Uh, this is a satin enamel, stain blocking paint and primer all in one. Now I know, Tim, why are you gonna prime the walls if this is paint and primer? Well, we need to seal in that drywall compound. And I want to get a nice seamless look all over this wall. So that's why we're gonna use the multi-surface primer first, and then we're gonna come back in with our scuff defense paint. Now, uh, this is a really nice color. This is uh, called shark fin. I don't know if you can see the little daub of paint here. Um, I'll throw up a, a paint sample here on the video, but this is a really, really nice kind of lighter neutral gray, and I think this is gonna look great in the studio. We're gonna have another contrasting color, which is a little bit darker. We'll show you that later. Um, but let's get started on painting the walls. Alright, so as you can see, we've got the entire room primed. Uh, floor to ceiling, everything is looking good. Uh, as you can see, it's splotchy. It doesn't need to be perfectly neat. It's primer. The paint will cover all that up. But the next step before we get to painting the walls is actually painting the ceiling. It's a little bit of a patchwork in terms of shades and there's some uh, different scuff marks and things like that. So we're going to use some really cheap, inexpensive ceiling paint. And we're also going to use our extension pole with our roller attached to it to make very short work out of painting the ceiling. So let's get started. Alright, so we've got everything primed. We've got the ceiling painted. It's all now one shade of white, thankfully. Um, now, as you could see in the previous footage, the paint went on a little dark, a little gray, um, but it dried out and it's super crisp and white, which is great. Um, really excited about the look of that. So now, now we get to paint the actual wall colors in this place. Um, so first things first, we've got to do what's called cutting in, um, taking a brush and brushing around all of the uh, corners, all of the edges up to the ceiling, around the trim, etc. Now, for those of you that know me and that have followed me, I don't like hand brushing all that much. So this is the all, this is all the hand brushing that I'm ever going to do, right? Um, but, uh, so we'll get that done first. We'll make quick work of that, and that will in turn make quick work of covering up these walls and getting this place a nice shade of gray. So, cutting in. We use a nice uh, two and a half inch angled brush. We got our little 
uh, container of paint. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna run it right across the corner here. As you can see, I've already started on this side here. And we're just gonna get a nice swath of border, uh, which helps us to protect the edge. That's the most important thing. So to do that, we just load up our paintbrush, start laying down this border here first, right? Get nice coverage about three inches from that from that top corner, and then start just gradually working the brush up to the corner. Now to get right into the the corner piece here, we're going to turn our brush and just work the paint right up against the edge very, very slowly. And just follow that corner just like that. We're going to do it a couple times here. And there we go. We've cut this corner and now it's ready essentially for the roller. We'll just even this out and try to get as good coverage as we possibly can. A little light spot right in there we'll touch up just a bit. And if we happen to get any egregious paint on the ceiling, well, at least we now have ceiling paint. We can touch that up and good to go. But as you can see, that's a nice crisp line now. We we'll just do this for the entire, entire perimeter. <sighs> yeah, here we go. So another advantage of cutting in is working on inside corners and around the trim. So here is the trim for the uh, doorway here, and here's the inside corner for where these two walls meet. Now the inside corners, they're super easy. All you have to do is basically just take your angled brush and just go to town and uh, get a nice border of paint up and down this corner. You don't even have to be all that, you know, all that careful with it either because after all, it's the inside corner and as long as you get a nice border of paint on there, you'll be perfectly fine. As long as it's good coverage as well. That's the other important thing. So we've got our corner done here. Now we need to tackle the trim work. Now that's a little bit more, um, kind of like how the ceiling is, you have to be pretty careful with it. So again, what I like to do is just come in with the paint first and get kind of that border started around this thing. But then come in with the angle and just really get tight up against that, up against that trim work. And you might need to do this a few times to get proper coverage, right? But once you do, man, it looks really, really good. Very professional. And it will make your paint job pop that much more. All right, so as you can see, we've got all the cutting in done. Uh, all the way around the room, around all the trim, around pretty much every little detail. Um, started to paint the wall a little bit, just to see kind of what the color is going to look like. And it, it's gorgeous. I love this color. Um, the spots around the trim and the walls and everything that have dried, um, it gets just a little darker than this, but not a lot. And I, I've, I'm in love with this color. This is gonna look great in here. So let's grab a roller with the extension pole. Let's get some paint on this wall, let it dry. We'll get a second coat on here. Make it look absolutely amazing.
right, so there you have it, you guys. This wall is completely painted. That took all of maybe 10 minutes. Um, a roller on an extension pole um, is an absolute game changer when you're painting walls, uh, complete walls like this. You make short work of it, and I will never go back to just, you know, using a hand roller uh, without the extension pole again. So, uh, if you need to do some painting, get yourself an extension pole, well worth the money. Um, you will tear through these walls. Now, um, we're going to let this wall dry for a few hours. I'm going to coat the rest of the walls uh, in their first coat and uh, then come back in a few hours after that and uh, put a second coat on all these walls because um, these are going to dry and you're still going to see little splotches of um, bleed through from the primer and stuff. You're going to see little little things. It almost looks like a sponge texture. Um, so we're going to come back, coat this with a second uh, layer of paint, and uh, this is basically what the studio is going to look like. Um, I'm really, really, really happy with it. This paint color is absolutely amazing. I can't wait to get the trim on and everything, um, but that is a, for a future video. The existing trim though, we absolutely have to take care of before we move on. So um, we're going to paint all of the, the trim, the existing trim, the door to the bathroom down here, a very, very bright white. Um, that's gonna go and accent with all of the fixtures in here. We're gonna be replacing all of the electrical outlets, switches and everything with bright white, brand new fixtures. Um, also fixture covers, everything. It's just going to be a very, very nice classy uh, contrast between uh, everything in here. So can't wait to get started on that. Um, let's start by tackling the existing trim first though. Let's get to work. As you can see by the green tape over here alongside the door, I've already started to uh, tape up a lot of the perimeter on the existing trim work here. Um, we've got a couple more sides that I'll show you kind of my techniques. It's not very uh, complicated, but um, there are a few things that I like to do and show um, that give me nice results. Now for tape, I like to use the froggy tape. Um, good old green frog tape here, yes. Uh, it is more expensive, yes. Um, and I do like it better and I've gotten better results than say the 3M painter's tape and you know, regular masking tape. Um, so that's what I'm using here today. And uh, so let's get up on the ladder. I'll show you how to tape off the edges and everything and kind of show you how I finish off uh, the taping before we get to paint. So we're up here uh, ready to tape off the top of the trim piece here over top of the bathroom door here in the studio. Um, the tops of trims like this, you don't have to be too, too careful um, simply because no one's ever going to be up here to actually look at it. So uh, this is a great piece to show you how uh, I go about taping this off. And it's just like taping off a model um, for masking as well. So uh, since I'm right-handed, I go left to right. Um, pretty simple technique, but get a, a, about a foot of tape pulled out. And your starting point, obviously, is going to be your most important part here, right? Get that nice and pushed down, burnished down, if you will. And then I just like to pull out a good length of tape here and just get that right up as close to the edge as I possibly can, and then go back and just push down that tape. Pull out another length here, just so we have enough to work with. And again, just push that down just work that tape kind of right into the corner of where you're, uh, where you're taping off here. And then pull that. Now, we're not done just yet. Uh, this tape is really, really good. Um, this tape, 
uh, from what I understand, has an additive in the adhesive that once moisture from the paint hits the additive, um, it basically forms a, a seal, like a coagulant seal, um, which stops the paint and creates the mask. Um, now to further improve that mask, um, we're going to burnish this down a little bit, but, um, not with our fingers cause that's just clumsy. Let me show you uh, real quick what I use. So to burnish this down, I just grab a little piece of paper towel, fold it up like this, and then just using this, just really press that right down into the corner with a good amount of pressure and then just basically wipe that right across the surface of the tape. And that's just basically just going to push this tape down onto the surface and burnish it uh, down onto the wall surface as much as possible. Um, now, if you guys have seen kind of like my live streams and stuff, you know how I like to use like sticky tack to burnish the tape down to really push it in uh, and get a good adhesion. Same type of principle with this paper towel. It just floats and slides right across the surface better than your finger um, and it just helps the adhesion of the tape. I don't know if that's like accurate or not, but that's, I just feel like it, that's what it does. So go with me on this. I've had good luck with it and overkill is underrated. So now we're here over here on the side of the trim uh, as opposed to the top and uh, same rules apply down here. We're just going to pull uh, the tape right down, work it right into the corner and uh, just tape right down here and then we'll be done with the masking. So let me show you kind of close up how we do things. And before anybody asks, no, I do not recommend this for masking models. Uh, the adhesion's way too high. Stick with the good stuff. Stick with Tamiya masking tape. As you can see, paint, trim, everything is pretty much complete. And I really love the look so far. So here's what the newly painted trim looks like, right? as opposed to the ugly, creamy, colored, stain-ridden look of it. And even here, you can see this side, as opposed to here, two different paints. So it's looking pretty good. The paint looks amazing. I'm super happy with it. Um, there's still a few surprises that I have for you guys coming up in later episodes. We're not done anywhere near yet. Um, but the next big step is to lay the flooring. Uh, so let's get rolling on that. Yeah. But until next time, my name is Tim, the one and only child of Mecca. This has been another episode of this new studio. Come on back for the next one. You guys take care. I'll see you all later.